Hello. No, I know, I know. Nothing screams fun times like a video on punctuation, right? Well, anyway, today's video is going to show you the correct way to use the colon because when they're used accurately, these wee punctuation marks can really add to your qualities as a writer and the examiner is quick to pay attention. So we have a squint at a few examples considering the right way and the shot, <coughs> excuse me, and the wrong way to use the colon, that prince of punctuation marks. In simple terms, a colon normally comes before an explanation, description, definition or list. And I've channeled my inner maths teacher here to give you a rough formula for using colons. One side of the colon, normally the first side, you need a proper sentence or independent clause. That's the bit in red there. To the side of the colon, you've got choices. You can put another full sentence, you can put a dependent clause, a phrase, a list. As I say, you've got options. And you can see here, I've just turned that formula bum about front. Just to emphasize that you can, if you wish, put that main or independence clause, that full sentence after the colon. Maybe you'll do that one time out of a hundred. I don't know, but it's a choice that you have. Anyway, enough. With punctuation, there is such a thing as too much theory. Let's serve up now a few examples and you can see a couple of colons in action. Colons then are great for launching explanations. That's arguably their primary use. Uh, you can see here, or you'll be sleeping with the lights on tonight, folks. The horror classic demons has a chilling tagline. There's your full sentence or independent clause. Then comes the colon. After that, I explain what that tagline is. They will make cemeteries their cathedrals and the cities will be your tombs. And like I said before, what you put on the right hand side of the colon doesn't have to be a full sentence. In fact, it can just be one word. Clock that example at the top there where Mr. Taylor's been a very catty matty. There's only one thing I hate about you, everything. And notice the lowercase letter after the colon. And in that example at the bottom there, you can see I'm explaining through a list just why Kevin wouldn't be welcome at our house. Let's have a quick read. Kevin was a mother-in-law's nightmare, jobless, feckless, and out on parole. You can see then that a colon is a great springboard or launching pad for kicking off an explanation based on what you were saying on the left hand side of that colon. We're going to stick with Kevin that bit longer because that dead eyed Neanderthal helps us demonstrate how colons can be used to launch a description. Yes, this example is sort of like an explanation, but by describing Kevin's unappealing appearance, we're explaining why he's such a nightmare for a mother-in-law. Let's have a quick read. Kevin was a mother-in-law's nightmare, sloping brows hovered over a drooling underbite of yellowing broken teeth. Let's roll out another colon to kick off a description. Susie came down to a delightful breakfast. Mountains of scrambled eggs loaded on the great wedges of hot buttered toast, all washed down with a steamy jug of coffee. So you've got a mouth-watering description of a heavenly meal the breakfast she sat down to. Alternatively, you can argue that it's an explanation. I'm explaining just exactly what Susie's breakfast entailed. Either way, colon required. This slide shows how a colon can be used to launch a definition. Have a look in particular at the second one about that Italian genre of cinema, the Jello. In theory, I don't actually need a colon there, but because I'm defining something, giving a definition, perhaps a dictionary definition, the colon is acceptable. Most people can master this one quite easily. This is the idea of using a colon to launch a list. Uh, you've got your sentence, you've got your colon, and you've got your list. Two examples there. Don't forget, before the list, you need a standalone sentence, that independent clause, the stuff in red. What I'm going to do now is whip through a few common mistakes that teachers see popping up all the time in students' work when they're experimenting with colons. Clock that example here. I want to watch films. Well, do you know what? Stroll on colon. Your interjection is not needed here. You don't put a colon in the middle of a complete sentence. That doesn't work. Just let that sentence, that independent clause, flow like a mountain stream without any impediment. And here's another example to reinforce that message. Jedi's are brave, moral and intuitive. You might think, hey, that's a list, it needs a colon. Eh. Because it's a standalone sentence, the colon is redundant. It's not required. Just say 
Jedi are a brave, moral and intuitive. A colon is as much use here as a knitted saucepan, so just leave it out. Building on our last two slides, revealing common mistakes, here's another one. Don't put a colon after a preposition, such as in, on, under, around, to, by, or whatever. So long colon, you're dead weight here, so just get lost. Listen, I don't care how high your IQ is, even your Oxbridge candidates seem to struggle with stitching, for example, into a sentence properly. And above is the wrong way to do it. I love pies, for example, steak pies, chicken pies, and apple pies. Obviously you have to cut the colon, next slide I'll show you how to phrase that properly. And there you are, as the Punch and Judy man says, that's the way to do it. It's the same deal with the phrase such as. Just like for example, students really struggle to get that in properly to a sentence. Obviously, the example here is wrong. You need to kill that colon to stop it from stemming the flow of this fantastic sentence. If you're doing your GCSEs, or you simply want to write more effectively and persuasively in letters, articles and the like, you're going to find this book is a blessing. It's a proper weapons grade revision resource. How do I know? Well, its contents have helped scores of my students this year to walk away with a haul of high marks, those level seven to nines in their English language GCSE. In short, this book works. Okay then, let's forget everything and remember, columns are a gift for launching definitions, descriptions, lists and explanations. You don't need to use them in every sentence. You look a right Wally, but judiciously sprinkled over a piece of written work, maybe using two or three of them, really helps your writing to read in a clearer, more considered style. But that's enough of my part. Let's leave you good people today. I wish you the very best of luck in that exam.